A Perugia ora. When police arrived here that Friday morning. After 18 months of international speculation about whether she is a killer, 21-year-old Amanda Knox took the stand today to proclaim her innocence. Allora, c'era Raffaele. In a clear voice and in Italian, she said she was at her new boyfriend Raffaele Solecito's house the entire night her roommate was murdered. Amanda said that she and Raffaele had a late dinner, smoked some pot, had sex, and went to sleep. And when Amanda today described how she learned that Meredith had been stabbed, she grew emotional. She went on to explain that infamous video of Amanda and Raffaele kissing outside the murder scene, saying she was in shock and that she hugged Raffaele for comfort, quote, he was cuddling with me because I was shaking, I didn't know what to think. Amanda switched to Italian after first testifying in English with a translator, a process that clearly left her frustrated. So what ended up happening was... So what ended up happening was... Amanda was adamant that despite police denials, she was beaten and bullied into signing a statement she now says is false. Under the amount of pressure of everyone it yelling at me, though. maybe I was traumatized. The jury paid close attention. The judge several times interrupted Amanda, asking her to slow down and clarify her remarks. Amanda sat at a table in the middle of this 15th century courtroom, far from her lawyers and the prosecutor. Just one of the many ways that Italian court procedures differ from those in the U.S. Amanda's fate will be decided by two judges and six jurors. The jurors were selected at random from the people of Perugia and were not screened for any preconceived biases. And that's not all. There's a total of eight of them. So the lead judge, if there is a tie, four to four, gets a second vote. And you can have a verdict that is five to four on a murder charge versus 12-0, you know, or a Doesn't unanimous have to be decision. Unanimous. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Just a mere majority. That is mm -hmm. correct. And then there is this twist. Lead prosecutor Giuliano Menini is himself on trial for obstruction of justice and abuse of power in a different case. Court is held only a few days a month, and there have been days when some of the jurors have seemed to fall asleep during testimony. You must want to stand up and scream, this is my daughter's life at stake That's here, exactly pay attention. It. And I think the long periods of time in between hearings, what they read in the newspaper, what they see on television, what their whole perception even going into the case is, because they're picked out of a lottery. You are a juror, end of story. The jurors were listening today. Amanda and her lawyers began to provide their explanation for the forensic evidence linking her and her one-time boyfriend, Raffaele Solecito, to the crime. To start, the knife that the prosecution says is the murder weapon does not match some of the wounds on Meredith's body. And the DNA found on the blade that the prosecution says belongs to Meredith was so microscopic, there wasn't enough for the defense to test. The knife DNA deposits are, are very curious to me, and frankly, I don't think it's that strong uh, for the prosecution. Columbia University professor Javier Amador is an expert in forensic evidence. The knife was with other implements that were collected at the boyfriend's house, so there's a, there's a possibility of cross-contamination. But it's not contaminated evidence that will be the most crucial part of Amanda's defense, but the complete lack of it at the murder scene. Police did not find a single strand of Amanda's hair, a fingerprint, or a drop of her blood in Meredith's room. And it would have been impossible for Amanda to clean up her own DNA and yet leave behind all the DNA found there belonging to the one person already convicted of the crime, Rudy Gaudet. Having the struggle that must have taken place, you know, for a young girl fighting for her life, and leave absolutely nothing, not a speck of hair, no pieces of DNA to any degree in that room, and have it cleaned up. It's, it is impossible. It's impossible. Impossible. The prosecution's second line of attack is centered on Amanda's seemingly inappropriate behavior just after the murder, all breathlessly chronicled in the tabloid press. 
On the stand today, Amanda testified that in stressful situations, she often tries to lighten things up, something that experts say could have been misinterpreted. Cartwheels and, and kisses right after the death of her friend it could be immaturity and anxiety. Uh, this could be so many things. Uh, it doesn't scream to me of culpability in the murder. There's always the question at the heart of the matter, why would anybody do this? Why would anybody engage in a three-way sex game that results in the death of a girl? Amanda and Raphael only knew each other for seven days before this horrific crime took place. How you go from knowing each other, kind of beginning a relationship, to all of a sudden bringing a third person in play and try to go into an, an, an orgy, a sex drug crazed orgy, which is just not feasible. Anybody who knows Amanda, knows her character, her true character, will tell you it's not possible, it's not her. After court, Amanda's father told us his daughter held up well today. I think she did great. Uh, I was very proud of her, you know, as her father. I, we were able to go behind the, the, the wall, I call it, and actually hug her and tell her that she did really good. Amanda's parents have watched their oldest daughter turn 21 in prison. Since her arrest 18 months ago, one of them has been with her in Italy nearly every week. She's innocent. There has been a toll, both emotional and financial. It's horrific. I mean, it's, it's getting close to seven digits. Close to a million dollars you've spent? How do you come up with money like that? You just do whatever it takes. I mean, it, whatever it takes. It may take a lot more. Italy's trial of the century may not even end with a verdict. In Italy, the prosecutor can appeal, even an acquittal. No matter how you look at it, this isn't going to be over anytime soon. How do you continue on through... Knowledge? You stay focused on Amanda and making sure that that light is there for her. And you just work through it. You just have to. You're not going to leave an innocent daughter in a foreign prison. After nearly seven hours on the witness stand today, Amanda Knox will be back on the stand tomorrow, the same day, incidentally, that she was supposed to be graduating from the University of Washington in Seattle.